Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day and thank you so much for joining me for another one of my sketchbook videos. This week's sketchbook spread was filled up with two different graphite studies of animal skulls. And I promise you, I did not create these to be morbid. There is actually an objective behind these studies. And this was basically to gain a better understanding of the underlying structure of what we're able to see of an animal's head in plain sight. I don't know if I have ever shared this in a past YouTube video or only over on Patreon where I share more tutorials that I don't share over here, but even when we're trying to improve the sense of realism in our portraits, when we're trying to draw human faces, for example, it's so, so useful to create studies of human skulls. And the reason this is, is because we're better able to understand the human head's three-dimensional structure. We're better able to understand the nooks and the crannies and the different planes that are involved in the human head even those planes that we're not able to very easily and very readily see when we're looking at a face, because obviously the skeleton or the skull is covered up by more layers, like for example, muscle, fat, skin, etc. We're better able to understand things like, for example, how deep our eyeballs are actually sitting within our heads, which in turn helps us really develop more believable shading, we're able to see quite literally the bare bones of the individual facial features and where they sit within the head structure, which really helps with achieving effective proportion, which is absolutely imperative in order to um, be able to create a believable portrait. And all of these things really apply to drawing and painting animals as well. Drawing and painting animals can be super challenging, not only because their overall proportions tend to be so different from ours, but also because there are so many different kinds of species and their structures or proportions really vary a ton. So I highly recommend these kinds of studies if you're trying to develop your sense of realism in either your portraits or your animal drawings. We are able to continue developing our observational skills, our drawing skills, our ability to recreate different values, to give something a sense of three-dimensional form. And at the same time, a lot of information is able to stick in our brains in terms of realistic animal proportions and all of this. All right, everyone. So before talking a little bit about my supplies that I am using and my general drawing process that I like to follow, I just want to send out a huge welcome to all of you new people just visiting my channel today for the very first time. I am so, so happy that you found me and do consider subscribing because every single week I share new videos with art tips, drawing and painting tutorials and encouragement for aspiring artists. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to click on that little notification bell so that YouTube can let you know whenever I publish a new video. Otherwise, you may or may not find out about it. Okay, you guys, so as you've probably already noticed, at least if you've seen any of my past drawing videos, I am pushing for a bit of a higher level of realism in this sketchbook spread. And this is precisely why you're watching me use my blending stump, which is a drawing tool that I don't always use whenever I'm creating drawings because I also love using alternative shading techniques like hatching, cross hatching, etc which don't require a blending stump. This blending stump is allowing me to create smoother transitions between my different values and push that graphite around my paper. Aside from this blending stump, I used four different Prismacolor drawing pencil grades. I created my freehand preliminary pencil sketch using my HB pencil very, very lightly. And the reason why it's so, so important to create the preliminary pencil sketch lightly is because you wanna be able to correct mistakes, you wanna be able to refine your shapes. Not to mention, if you're going for higher levels of realism, you want to make sure that that preliminary outline sketch that you've created kind of dissipates and blends into the different values that you develop throughout your drawing process. Because always remember that when it comes to realism, there really are no outlines. As you saw in the beginning of both of these sketches, I really took my time creating, looking over, correcting, 
proportions before moving on to developing any sort of shading or smaller details. And this is super, super important to me because I don't want to spend hours upon hours developing shading and texture and detail on a base that isn't effective because no matter how beautifully we have our shading technique down and how smoothly we're able to create those beautiful blendings between light to dark values using graphite and everything like that, if we don't have effective proportions and we don't fully understand the three-dimensional form and structure of whatever it is we're trying to draw, most likely than not, that shading is gonna have flat areas. So I know that values are super, super important because it's ultimately different values that give a subject a sense of three-dimensional form, but I always kind of uh, mention this to students. You cannot jump to starting to put the icing on the cake if that base cake is off if it's not fully cooked, let's say. So just make sure that you take care of the A before moving on to the B. And you guys know that I love working on my freehand drawing skills as much as possible, so I really take my time creating that preliminary sketch and erasing as much as I have to until I arrive at something that looks good to me in order to move on. I always make sure to start from largest and most general shapes and make my way towards smaller shapes and specifics as I go. So for example, with these animal skulls, you saw me starting out with what I like to call an envelope. It's what I would imagine the entire skull overall shape to look like if it were completely covered with wrapping paper. That's more or less um, what I start with. And then after that looks good to me, I then move on to the second largest shape, which is in this case would be probably the eye sockets. Um, and then I move on to smaller shapes like that. Now, as I am creating this freehand sketch, it's quite normal that as I start adding in more elements into my drawing, I have more points of comparison. As you start adding in those smaller shapes, you may find that something should be made a little bit larger, something should be made a little bit smaller, maybe a certain angle has to be corrected, something should be moved a little bit more to the left or to the right, etc. And that's totally normal. It's super, super important to constantly compare the length, the width, the location, the angles created, etc., of the different elements involved in the piece in order to arrive at effective proportion because proportion is all about how those different elements relate to each other. All right, so after I have created that preliminary pencil sketch using my HB pencil and everything looks good enough to me, I then move on to starting to develop my different values in layers very carefully, very slowly, moving on to softer pencil grades incrementally. For these drawings, I used four different pencil grades. As I mentioned before, I started with my HB pencil. I then moved on to my 2B. Then I moved on to my 6B. And finally, for those darkest areas, I used my 8B pencil. And finally, in terms of my erasers that I use for these, I used a very basic rubber graphite eraser. Right here, you're seeing me use my Mono Zero eraser, which I absolutely cannot live without when it comes to drawing because the Mono Zero eraser allows me to pull out highlights and go into tiny little spaces to erase certain areas that I wouldn't be able to erase with a regular eraser. And I also had a needed eraser on hand, but I didn't use it at all. Links to all of these supplies will be left down below for you in the description box in case you're interested in checking them out for yourself. I usually get most of my art supplies via Amazon. All right, everyone, that is gonna do it for this video. I really hope that it inspired you to go and do some sketchbook studies for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really helps support the work that I'm doing here on YouTube and allows more people to get to know about my channel. If you have any questions or comments for me, make sure to leave them down below in the comment section. I love hearing from you guys. I always read every single comment, even though sometimes it does take me a few days to write back. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I appreciate it so, so much. I'm gonna leave a couple of other videos right here for you to enjoy next. Don't forget to subscribe so that I can see you very soon for another video and stay inspired. Bye guys.